local group. We're still strong. We were the ones who began it, Escape. Do you know, we had a tip-off from a doctor. How about that? A doctor gave us the initial tip-off about this place they wanted to build. But we couldn't find it. We could find no documents about it. We couldn't find the site. And we had to wait a year till one of the Cambridge colleges, that's one of the university colleges, ran Cambridge Animal Rights and said, we have knowledge of this, we abhor it, we want to fight it. And that's when ESCAPE, Cambridge Against Primate Experiments, was formed. We've had six peaceful demos. We have leafleted house to house for hours and hours on end. We've taken our message into schools and colleges. And we had thousands and thousands of names on our petitions. We also had thousands of letters sent to Cambridge South Cairns District Council who said never in the history of planning applications have they ever had so many letters opposing a planning issue. That is something to be said for us. The strength, the union, united we were in getting people, ordinary people, not just animal rights people, ordinary people to write in. We are backed by all the animal protection groups. Twice, because of this campaign, twice Cambridge turned it down. Once because it was on Greenbelt area, thanks to Animal Aid's wonderful planning officer who did the report for the council. They seemed as if they hadn't got their act together on it. They really, really thanked Animal Aid's planning officer for doing this for them, and they turned it down. Next application, slight changes, a few trees to make it look prettier. Still it was turned down. This time because the police said it would be impossible to police it because so many people would be out in protest. So then they decided, right, appeal to the Secretary of State, which they did. And we had this amazing two weeks in the council chambers with the public inquiry. All the animal protection groups united and wonderful speeches and really important, there were the doctors standing up to be counted on our side, saying that this will never, never bring advancement to medicine or drugs or cures or prevention for Alzheimer's or Parkinson's or stroke or all these dreadful, dreadful neurodegenerative diseases. So we know, we've got what we feel, we know what we feel about it, we know what the medical world feels about it. But amazingly, Cambridge University are still plugging away at this silly old story that they will find cures by cutting open the heads of little monkeys. On the radio this morning, I don't know if any of you were early up, uh, up early enough to hear Andrew Tyler, Director of Animal Aid, with his interview on Radio 4. He was against the pro a pro-vice-chancellor from the university. The first question was, so these laboratories you're going to build, just what do you hope to achieve and how much have you achieved so far with the research you've done? Do you know he couldn't answer it? He could not say one single advancement for neurodegenerative diseases, because there have been none, nothing. 10 years they've been doing it here, abusing primates, they've got nothing from it. And then he started waffling and saying, oh, but polio and malaria. So Andrew had to say, get back to the point, answer the question, and he couldn't. in this century is like fighting a high-tech war with muskets and cannonballs. This is how stupid it is using animals for medical research. 
There is no need, they will get nowhere, and all they will do is hold back real progress. The very progress that Professor Rice, Professor Claude Rice, another of our medical witnesses at the inquiry, he is doing research into Alzheimer's vaccine without animals. One more. Here at the Cambridge Brain Bank, the director is doing research into Alzheimer's without animals. So we, so we say to you, Cambridge University, Look to what you're doing. Forget the plans for this. Get into the real world. Get into the 21st century and do your research without animals. Thank you. Some of the points Sue's made, I'm, I'll avoid making. The case is simple, isn't it? We don't need this centre. There's no purpose for it. It's immoral, it's illegitimate, it makes no sense on any count. I mean, making the case, the scientific case against animal experiments has always been important for animal aid. We have to do it because this is what the public understands, because they do that test. Does it help me? If it helps me, some people, I don't care about the animals. We know the animal model misleads and is therefore dangerous to be, to be, depend on when developing new drugs, when doing safety tests, or trying to understand the kind of remedies that they'll be examining if they get their way at this new Cambridge Centre. At the recent public inquiry which we've heard about, we weren't in, into whether they can build this gigantic hellhole. We weren't even allowed to talk about the cruelty, the suffering. We had to concentrate on the science, fair enough.